Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this, your Scorpio August 2023 reading and forecast. Hi, I'm Nigel St. James Clairvoyant, and I've done a number of clairvoyant readings one-on-one -on -one through FaceTime and Skype for Scorpios over the last month since last we met. And if you might be interested to see what's involved in that, check out the information that's in the description box below. I've also done, over the month, a lot of healings for people as well. Now, healings are free, so have a look at the info in the description box below. And don't be afraid to reach out if you feel that you need that. Now, what the subscribers know, and it's wonderful to see the subscribers. Thank you for having me in your home and what a pleasure it is to see you again. Do you know, I always look forward to seeing you each month and sharing your company. Truly, I do. Now, as you know, we only take five cards, don't we? Because the five that we take, we don't just spend five seconds on something. These cards, when we deal with them in our readings, they come alive, don't they? They, 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 they bring forth what's coming up and you can see it happening as we go through it. And you, you also know that there are no video advertisements breaking their way into the content. And so you get to enjoy that experience without interruption. Now, this deck, incidentally, is the scenery. It's hand painted and the scenery is Italian Renaissance, which was when? Around the 1600, early 1600, something like that. And so the scenery is stuff to do with people hanging around in Italy or parts thereof, uh, or, or dealing with stories that would have been recounted by people in Italy in the Renaissance times. Uh, and uh, anyway, what we'll do is I might use a pen to point out some of the more interesting features, at least as they, they strike me as we go through them anyway, if something jumps up and um, we can have a look at it together. But now let's get it underway for you, shall we? And here is the first card, and it is the Falling Tower. Indeed. What might this be? It is the Six of Coins. You guys just move around there. These aren't part of the reading, of course, but they do have very good complementary energy. I use these very often in my private readings. Uh, let's have a look at uh, something from in here, perhaps? Why not? <laughs> what is it? It is the Two of Coins. Here is the Popes. Well, I said it was Italian Renaissance, didn't I? And Popes and Popesses. Well, actually, there was a lady Pope, wasn't there, at one time? Or at least there's a fable that there was a, a, a female Pope at one time. Whether or not that was true, of course, I would say it probably isn't. And there's death. Interesting. Well, why don't you come now? Sit down here next to me, as is our usual practice. And why don't we have a really good look at this wonderful scenery that's on these cards together. See what's in it and listen to it. Speak while I do the reading for you. Let's see what there is here, shall we? I just like the look of this painting, which is the Pope S, and it's in this position underneath the falling tower and across from death. Very interesting. Three major arcana, of course. Let's have a look here at this Popes. See what's going on in the artwork, shall we? Then we'll have a quick discussion about her while she's sitting on her throne. Look in here, her hair. On top of this headdress is a crescent moon. The moon is very much associated with this energy here. And here there are like branches or twigs in her head and there are little birds perched in there, almost like birds' nests. She's holding a scepter down there. On her lap, she's holding a book, which I, which is the book of um, secrets, I suppose. And I can't help but see that there is a, a diagram of the tree of life from the mystical Kabbalah, which I won't go into now. On these columns here, on the left-hand column, at the base of it is a sphinx, and it goes up like this, and there it looks like a mermaid, but there is a serpent that's going around that is offering the mermaid an apple in its mouth. A reference, no doubt, to that book of Genesis in chapter 2, where the uh, serpent said to Eve, you should eat from the fruit. But of course, it wasn't an apple. 
It was never said to be an apple. Now that is the feminine principle there. And on the masculine principle here, this, this column of fire, there is flames, uh, water drops. It looks like a lizard and, uh, and a little heart thing there. Now on this side, her veil is being held up by the sun and by the moon. And on here, there is a checkered floor. She has her foot resting on a, 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 a cushion green, like the color of grass. And this checkered floor gives way to very lush vegetation and flowers. Well, what can we say is coming along for you then here? I think you're going to have access to your intuitive powers. You'll have the ability to heal yourself. Now, what you will have is a great desire for independence, for running your own show. And going along with that is going to be an increased level of self-confidence for you. You are going to be in the process of discovering your own truth, but this is all going to take place against the backdrop of a, uh, a, a great emotional balance. I think you'll be in touch like her. Now, when I speak about her, take it that I'm speaking about you. You know, she and you are going to be in touch with your intuitive abilities and are going to be able to complete them, to trust them completely. Now, she understands and is connected with her own inner voice the internal guide and healer. And this shows outwardly in her trust and responsibility to herself. Now, like the camel, which can travel longer stretches in the desert without water, can't it? You, when you have discovered your own inner spring, you are also going to radiate out a sense of charisma and magnetism. You will find a fertile oasis just like this is here. Externally and in the innermost reaches of your being, now understand that the more you accept yourself and share with others, the deeper the clarity of your understanding will become. And that's represented, I think, by this moon atop the head. There may also be for you a, a, a moment or two where you seek alone time to work out what it is you really want and just let your mind process things. You know, don't you, that changes on the inside are necessary in order to make changes on the outside. And there is a need here to connect and be more confident with your intuitive and feminine side. Now, if there are any men who are listening to this, don't be concerned about that because we all, males and females, have masculine and feminine principles within us. They're just expressed in a, your feminine side is just expressed in a, in a masculine way. So go with the flow in your life at the moment and keep things in balance. This can also talk about the, the establishment of a, of, a, of a quite good and strong platonic relationship. That is one that is not romantic. But in any event, I think now you are beginning a very strong creative cycle. You'll be asserting your independence. You're becoming aware of intuition as a gift. You now have access to your intuitive powers. So develop them more fully and guard your independence. There are other areas in your life in which you allow others to influence you rather than trusting your own intuition. And I'd ask you to seek out water as often as you can. Sit near it, look at it, listen to it, smell it, and learn from it as much as you can. And say to yourself, I deeply honor and value the human being that I am. I am intuitive and perceptive. I trust myself and honor my sense of integrity. Now, I thought we might have a look at, let's have a look at that. Why don't we do that? Oh, okay. I think I know what this is. Look, there, 
There was in biblical tradition, in fact, you've heard of the book of Daniel probably in the Hebrew and Old Testament. Well, that runs for 12 chapters. Well, they used, well, in some versions of the Bible, never in the Hebrew Bible and not in Protestant Bibles, but in some versions of Catholic Bibles and in Eastern Orthodox Bibles, there's a chapter 13 and it's called Susanna and the Elders. Why it's there, I don't know. It doesn't have a lot of spiritual input as far as I can tell. But what the story was, was that there were two, Susanna was married, a younger woman was married to a much older man, as very often happened, of course, in, in olden days. This is a few thousand years ago. Now, two, each day she used to get one of her slave girls to take her out to the pond in the back and she would bathe. And while she was doing that, two old guys here used to spy upon her. They used to be peeping toms and check out her voluptuous naked body. Anyway, she sent the slave girl indoors one day. And as she was getting out and drying herself off, there wasn't actually a mirror in the story. Uh, incidentally, this is the Triumph of Mercury, and that's just a library. But in the story here, one day the, the old guys came to her and said, Look, if you don't have sexual intercourse with us both now, we're going to tell everybody that you did anyway, that you're an adulteress. And the punishment for adultery in those days, of course, for a woman was stoning. Anyway, she said, uh, she defended her honor and said, I'm not sleeping with you people. Anyway, so those guys went off and told everybody that, um, that she was an adulteress and she was being sentenced to death. Now, a young Daniel, you see, it was a young Daniel. He came in and he said, he said, these guys should be cross-examined independently about what happened. And the thing is, is that they both gave different accounts as to what was the tree under which the sexual intercourse was supposed to have taken place. And so their, ver so their charge against her was thrown out and she was set free. That's the story behind it anyway. But that aside, this is the Lord of Harmonious Change here. And the good thing is it is Jupiter ruling the first decan of Capricorn. Now Jupiter is the great benefic of the zodiac, bringing you good fortune, bringing you expansion, bringing you happiness. Now you might think that Jupiter in Capricorn is inharmonious because Capricorn is very serious, wants to get things down, very ambitious. But look, with this number two, the only card ahead of it in this suit is the ace of coins and so because we're so far up to the source of earth that i don't have a problem and so i i don't have a problem with the astrology as i see it so this is a time of movement for you there's changes around and they're bringing things which are for your better. They have a few ups and downs and there's growth through change. Now, there'll be a lot of multitasking, I think, and you'll have quite a heavy workload. But the thing is this, is that you will be enjoying your work and that's a welcome change, isn't it? And it will also be a, a welcome change when you find that you are moving into a new and better place. You see, Jupiter, the planet symbolizing luck and expansion, indicates that the change will bring luck and enrich your life, and the new will bring more stability and security, which is the Capricorn side of it. A change, of course, is always necessary when the old falls out of balance and change wakes you up. The other thing is this that I would say is that I don't think that there's anything materially set in concrete at the moment, although there's very good things coming ahead. So things are moving in the right direction. This actually, I've got to tell you, unfortunately, it also means you've got to make, take care of your everyday, your everyday affairs, make sure they're in order, paying bills, getting the rent paid, getting the uh, credit card statements paid, all that sort of stuff, because this is a card of good management. So your practical affairs are going to go well, I think. Do you know your life is subject to constant change, which allows you to grow, extending and expanding you and ultimately enriching you. 
So give yourself up to this transformation with trust. Now, what internal or external changes are going on in your life? And where are you still clinging? Say this to yourself. I trust in the harmony of my life and in the flow of my life. Every day, in every way, I am getting better and better. Now that takes us to, now there's a period of transformation. Now this is talking about this transformation. And this is continuing this transformation, but it ends up with a very great success for you. You'll find this is happening for you in this month of August. Good for you. Now here is a skeleton with a scythe and it's using like a human spine as the scythe. This crow, I suppose it is, is a sign that there's dead things around because it wants to eat the dead creatures. But this blue, is that water or is it ground? Anyway, this is speaking of, of um, new life. See the hands poking up, they're reaching up with energy and there's blue, there's green plants around that you might be able to see as well. And they're a symbol of growth and new things happening. I also noticed that the skeleton is doing a sort of a dance. That's very reminiscent of the way in which the um, Lord Shiva is depicted uh, in art. Uh, Shiva, of course, being the, the destroyer and the renewer and is often depicted as dancing in a theme not dissimilar to that. So that would go well with death here as well, I would imagine. Now this is Mars, fiery planet of Mars, ruling Scorpio. That's good news. Now this is Mars here, which is your ruler, by the way. I'm not one of these people that thinks that Pluto is. Now Pluto may well have a home in Scorpio, but the CEO of Scorpio is definitely Mars. Now, it's the fiery energy of Mars here in its lowest form, which is necessary to provide the impulse to change. And there's for renewal here as well. Now, you probably know that you have three forms in Scorpio. The Scorpion, now you're the fixed sign of water, so Scorpion, ice, hard. And then there's a snake, which is undulating like water, which is liquid. And then there's the eagle, which is up in the air, which is gas. So you have that renewal, that regenerative position to your particular sign. Now I call this the child of the great, the great transformers, the Lord of the gate of death. They may well be here. Now, death and resurrection is a, is a constant theme throughout history. And what this means is, of course, is that the old has to give way for the new. And incidentally, if you're thinking about whether or not there is a resurrection for you, I can tell you, it's just like walking through a door. There is no, that which is alive cannot die. When your physical body has expired, the door opens, you walk through it and you're in the, the other realm. You are becoming free of old ensnarements. And there's probably some changes going on outside and around you as well. And you'll be letting go of emotional attachments. There's something of the end of an era here, a cycle that's going on. You see, there's some old relationships that are demanding to be disintegrated. Now, this process may be bound together with some painful experiences. However, because you have drawn this card, it indicates that you are ready to go through that process. The act of letting go, difficult as it can be, is going to free you. Now, death shows two faces, one destroying and tearing down, and the other freeing you from old bonds which have become restrictive and confining, preventing life. Now, which of these aspects will dominate depends on your attitude. Any desire to hold on to or cling to old bonds will cause their death to appear that much more agonizing. I think you are ready now to make the necessary changes in your life. Accept any pain that may come with the loss of the old. There's also a, a sense here of you, of you testing your limits and trying to extend yourself is what I'm getting. But the other thing that you probably want to ask yourself this is like, and this is a good time of year to do it, 
To what outdated relationships or situations are you clinging even though they are acting as a drag on you and they are not supporting you? Say this to yourself. I let go of people and situations with ease, compassion and dignity. Every ending heralds the new beginning. I now say yes to death and yes to myself. Yeah, it's quite a transformatory period all around for you, isn't it? But in a good way, that's the good thing. In making you fitter, making you stronger and making you more confident. Let's have a look here, the falling tower. Well, what's, look, this is interesting. The first thing I will notice about this is that this tower is built on sand, right? Everything here in this life is built on sand, isn't it? The seeming, most seemingly important things. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven stories, not unlike that Tower of Babel in the Old Testament or Hebrew Bible, that Tower of Babel story. And there's an obelisk poking out at the top of this thing here. Here is a kid. Now what's happened is that the, the, in this case, it's the sun has sent a blast of solar energy down destroying the tower and sending up something akin to a sort of a nuclear mushroom cloud. And falling from the tower is a guy with a crown on his head. So there's the king. You see, sic transit gloria mundi. So passes the glory of the world. And different things are falling down. Aeroplanes, cars, satellites, television sets, bits and pieces. There's a guy down here who has lying on the ground and he's been smacked in the head with a brick and there are some people cowering underneath some debris that's there. This window here is gothic and that speaks of the material of the, of the spiritual realm, I think, stepping through into that. Whereas these square doors here, I think, refer to material reality and life. Both of which, of course, are important to us. Now, not only are you going through some sort of an external oh, cleaning up, I think is what I would call it, a spring clean through death. You're also going through a period of what I would call uh, internal transformation and healing that's here. Do you know that for me, this is the best healing card of the Tarot, actually. And what's also happening here is that in combination with death, and it's at the other end of this diagonal, that the old is being destroyed to make way for the new. And there could well be a great degree of self-knowledge acquired by you in this period, as well as some spiritual renewal. But there is a release, maybe something of a revelation. I think you might find out a few secrets about things, you know. You're going to find out something about somebody that you didn't know before. And it's also about breaking down of old forms or patterns that have been uh, entwined within you, which may not necessarily be for your best. And in some respects, this is also a calm after the storm. Do you know, this power here is the consuming, purifying fire that destroys the old and sweeps it away. Nothing is spared. The tower of the ego will be shaken to its very foundations and anything that you attempt to cling to will be destroyed by this transforming power. Now, all that remains is trust, the knowledge that all events in life arise from the endless love of the divine and bring you the possibility for learning and recognition this understanding of the true nature of events transforms even apparent losses or painful disappointments into the valuable gifts that they actually are. The tower is, as I say, one of the highest cards for healing. So you're going to start feeling good about yourself and a good time of year for that as well. Now, I think that 
you are in the midst of, or about to enter into, an extremely intensive transformatory process. Now, whatever is destroyed or shaken within you serves to purify you and make room for, for something new. So allow it. I think what there is here is that there could be some problems with relationships that you may be thinking are really no longer what you really need in your life. And the decision that you need, what it's saying to you here is that you need to make clear and just take clear and decisive action with respect to that. Now ask yourself this, are you ready to view yourself and your life with new eyes? Can you look upon it as an external person would do and say, this is what you should be doing. This is the environment you should have. These are the people you should know. This is what you should be doing. Say this to yourself. Observe yourself in daily life. Situations may seem to repeat themselves, but you will not continue to repeat old, limited, restrictive behavior patterns. Say this to yourself. I am not inside my body. My body is inside me. Who I think I am is a belief to be undone. I have the ability to heal and restore myself at all times. And everything that happens in my life is for the best. Now, if you go through that process, you see, as you will do, and it's a process that's going to lead to great success for you, your relationships, your standard of living, and everything about you. Let's have a look at this, because I actually reckon that this is the Lord of material success here in disguise as a man who is holding a, well, some sort of a, a, a javelin. So he's a guard of some description. Now, what are these paintings that are here? Just make sure that you can get a closer look at them if you want. There is a miser that is hoarding his treasure. That looks like the triumph of Jupiter. That is a fool who's lost all of his money. There's a fool who's come into a lot of money. There's a rose in the shape of a mandala. Mandalas are those things used in Tibetan Buddhism. Well, maybe not just in Tibetan Buddhism, I suppose. They're patterns that people focus on to go into meditation or prayer. And up here, there's a rich guy who is handing out some money using scales, so probably a loan, to a poor man. Uh, there's nothing worse than debt, is there? Now, the astrology of this card is particularly good for you, I say, because this is, let me do that properly, where it's placed up here and above death and across in the tower, it is the moon ruling the second decan of Taurus, which is about the 1st to the 10th of May. Now, this is good. Now, Venus rules Taurus ordinarily, but here we have the moon in Taurus. Well, the moon is exalted in Taurus. So what this means is that Venus, the planet of relationship, beauty, friendship, love, actually treats the moon coming into Taurus, the constellation of Taurus, as an honored guest where the moon can show off her best that is her nurturing um, self, her comforting self. And so the astrology there is really good. But the moon, of course, is transient, isn't it? And she waxes, she wanes, she comes full, she goes dark, then there's a new moon. But the moon, as I say, likes nurturing and comfort. And Taurus, well, Taurus is the poster child of the love of material things like good food, good furnishings, good wine, good sex, good cars, good anything to do with the material world. Taurus is there. Now these two together then, the moon and Taurus, they combine to bring about material success here for you. So there is a sense of success 
and a generosity going both ways where you pay it forward. And so I think you could be receiving something of a financial boost. This is a very good energy here, maybe a grant or a scholarship if someone's looking for it. If people need some help from the welfare system, I think that's going to happen. There's an external manifestation. You see, you've gone through this process of death and the tower, and you've come here, which has then said, because you've gone through this inner transformation, there is now an external manifestation of success. So be open to your success. It's no less than a gift you can learn to accept, thankfully and humbly. Real success only comes once you have learned to serve. Success under these conditions enriches all levels of your beings. Say this to yourself though, my self-acceptance and self-confidence, they are the keys to real success. I really must say that that was a very interesting set of information provided uh, by the cards for you this month, don't you think? And doesn't it look like it's going to be a fantastic month for you? And you deserve it, I think, don't you? Now, do me the favor, would you, if you did like the video, please press the like button on your way out. It helps the YouTube computer thing uh, promote uh, the channel. And, and that's the only favor I ever ask of you. So. Uh, thanks if you do, do that and I'll see you again next month now but remember this though until I do do that that you are a legend and I do look forward to seeing you again next month and until then it's bye for now